Freedom from Deception Proverbs 6, 16-19 These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. The number seven is the number of fullness and completion. The poetic form here is stating that evil in its fullness is an abomination to God. The seven things mentioned are a description of the sin of man that stands in the temple of our bodies attempting to usurp God. These are the deceptive spirits that operate within us as human beings and the Word of God is cast and broadcast in our lives to give us freedom from these. In other words, you and I need deliverance from these when we surrender our lives to Jesus. You and I must be free from these seven things God hates. There are six evils God truly hates and a seventh that is an abomination to him. You and I must be free from putting others down while considering ourselves superior. You and I must be free from these spreading lies and rumors. You and I must be free from these spilling the blood of the innocent. You and I must be free from these plotting evil in your heart towards another. You and I must be free from these gloating over doing what's plainly wrong. You and I must be free from these spouting lies in false testimony. You and I must be free from these stirring up strife between friends. These are entirely despicable to God. The Bible therefore teaches us and shows us how to be free through the Word of God. Proverbs 8.13 The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Romans 13, 11 through 14. And now consider this. You know well the times you are living in. It is time for you to wake up and see what is right before your eyes. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The darkness of night is dissolving as dawn's light draws near. So walk out on your old dark life and put on the armor of light. May we all act as good and respectable people, living today the same way as we will in the day of his coming. Do not fall into patterns of dark living, wild partying, drunkenness, sexual depravity, decadent gratification, quarreling, and jealousy. Instead, wrap yourselves in the Lord Jesus, God's anointed, and do not fuel your sinful imagination by indulging your self-seeking desire for the pleasures of the flesh. Proverbs 26, 24 through 26. One who hates may camouflage it beneath pleasant words, but deep inside him, treachery still rages. Don't believe him when he speaks kindly, because his heart is completely ruled by evil. And though he covers his hatred with cleverness, his wicked ways will be publicly exposed. We live in a world full of lies, and deceit comes from many sources. There are lying spirits who led astray, the Bible, therefore, teaches us and shows us how to be free through the Word of God, according to 1 Timothy 4. But even so, the Spirit very clearly tells us that in the last times, some will abandon the true faith because of their devotion to spirits sent to deceive and sabotage, and mistakenly, they will end up following the doctrines of demons. They will be carried away through the hypocrisy of liars, whose consciousness have been branded with a red-hot iron, saying, don't marry, don't eat such and such foods. But God created all these to be received with gratitude by people who hold fast to the faith and really comprehend the truth. There are evildoers and imposters looking for dupes and, perhaps most insidious, we have ourselves to deal with. Self-deception is common in our fallen world. This is the reason why we need freedom from these spirits. 2 Timothy 3.13-16 but the evil men and sorcerers will progress from bad to worse, deceived and deceiving, as they lead people further from the truth. Yet you must continue to advance in strength with the truth wrapped around your heart, being assured by God that he's the one who has truly taught you all these things. Remember what you were taught from your childhood from the Holy Scrolls, which can impart to your wisdom to experience everlasting life through the faith of Jesus, the Anointed One. God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God-breathed. 
It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. The choices and consequences are clear. Rely on people alone and life will be tough and brutish. Rely on the one true God and life will be rich and productive. Our own hearts are deceitful, so much so that we easily fool ourselves according to Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. The heart is most devious and incurably sick. Who can understand it? It is I, the Eternal One, who probes the innermost heart and examines the innermost thoughts. I will compensate each person justly according to his ways and by what his actions deserve. The Bible therefore teaches us and shows us how to be free through the Word of God. Isaiah 44.20 speaks of an idolater who is misled by his own deluded heart. Isaiah, he feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? The prophet Obadiah identifies arrogance as one of the roots of self-deception. The pride of your heart has deceived you. Human pride always blinds us to truth. It promises honor, but it delivers disgrace. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The Bible warns us against deceiving ourselves. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. The self-deception that James has in mind relates to an inappropriate response to truth. God's word is meant to change us, we can sit in church for years, listening to sermon after sermon, but if we never allow the word we hear preached to change us, then we are self-deceived. We can read the Bible from cover to cover, but unless we put its commands into practice, we deceive ourselves. Psalm 119, 11. I consider your word to be my greatest treasure, and I treasure it in my heart to keep me from committing sins treason against you. John 17, 17. Your word is truth, so make them holy by the truth. But scripture was not merely given to produce theologians, but true saints. It was given so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Holding the truth in one's mind is not necessarily a character-changing quality. James illustrates merely looking at oneself in a mirror is not necessarily an appearance-changing experience. The mirror can tell us our hair is a mess, but unless we get out the brush and attack the problem, the tangles will remain. James 1, 23-24 God the Father is the giver of all things and is looking for every opportunity to bless us. But many people have difficulty trusting and receiving good things, even when those things come from God. The problem is that we not only have trouble trusting God's work in our lives, but we also don't always respond to God's voice. People often hear the scriptures, but don't really listen. People store truths in their brains, but never put them to use. For James, the only good religion is religion lived out every day. If some fail to do what God requires, it's as if they forget the word as soon as they hear it. One minute they look in the mirror, and the next they forget who they are and what they look like. God bless you. Bless you. The filthy, the vile, the righteous, and the holy. Revelation 22 verse 11 He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Indeed, it is the will of God that everybody should be saved according to 1 Timothy 2, verse 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent.
This foundation helps us understand this and is mentioned in Revelation 22 verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. Four categories of individuals are mentioned. Number one, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Number two, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Number three, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And number four, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. Which one is you? Which category best describes you relative with the Word of God? Are you the vile? We will investigate the scripture to find out what makes the vile according to scripture. Are you the filth? We will look into the scripture to find out what makes the filthy according to scripture. Are you the righteous? We will investigate the scripture to find out what makes the righteous according to scripture. Are you the holy? We will investigate the scripture to find out what makes the holy according to scripture. You and I need to hear and to know this. The Bible says this in John 8 verse 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the truth, my brother. This is the truth, my sister. Let us find out. The following Bible versions will help us receive this important truth. One of them is your favorite and will speak to you. Revelation 22 verse 10 to 12 New King James Version says, And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Jesus testifies to the churches, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent. Revelation 22 verse 10 to 12 The voice version says, do not seal up the prophetic words contained in this book for another day, for the finale is nearby. Let the one given to evil continue down evil's path, and the one addicted to filth continue to be its servant. But let the one who is righteous journey along the righteous road, and let the holy continue in holy ways. The Anointed One See, I am coming soon, and I will bring my reward with me. I will pay back every person according to the deeds he has done. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent. Revelation 22 verse 10 to 12, the Passion Translation says, And he said to me, Don't keep secret the prophetic words of this book, 
for the time is near. Let the evildoers be at their worst, and the morally filthy continue in their depravity. Yet the righteous will still do what is right, and the holy will still be holy. Jesus' final words and John's final testimony, Behold, I am coming quickly. I bring my reward with me to repay everyone according to their works. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent. Revelation 22 verse 10 to 12. New Living Translation version says, Then he instructed me, Do not seal up the prophetic words in this book, for the time is near. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent. Revelation 22 verse 10 to 12. Contemporary English version says, Don't keep the prophecies in this book a secret. These things will happen soon. Evil people will keep on being evil, and everyone who is dirty-minded will still be dirty-minded. But good people will keep on doing right, and God's people will always be holy. Then I was told, I am coming soon, and when I come, I will reward everyone for what they have done. Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is what God can do if some do not want to repent. Daniel 12 verse 10 Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to act wickedly. None of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. Ezekiel 3 verse 27 But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth, and you are to tell them, This is what the Lord God says. Whoever listens, let him listen. And whoever refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. The explicitly says of your choices in the following, Psalm 81 verse 12, So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Proverbs 1 verse 24 to 33. You completely ignored me and refused to listen. You rejected my advice and paid no attention when I warned you. So, when you are struck by some terrible disaster, or when trouble and distress surround you like a whirlwind, I will laugh and make fun. You will ask for my help, but I won't listen. You will search, but you won't find me. No, you would not learn and you refuse to respect the Lord. You rejected my advice and paid no attention when I warned you. Now you will eat the fruit of what you have done until you are stuffed full with your own schemes. Sin and self-satisfaction bring destruction and death to stupid fools. But if you listen to me, you will be safe and secure without fear of disaster.
Let us all get this loud and clear. God wants all mankind to repent and be reconciled to him. The big question is, what God can do if some do not want to repent? The filthy, the vile, the righteous, and the holy. Revelation 22 verse 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. God bless you.